Can we all be upstanding for the national anthem? Uh, given that we don't have the system, we'll all sing together. Oh God of all creation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace, and liberty. Plenty be found within our I'll politely request Madame Lorraine to put us in the hands of God. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your guidance and your wisdom today. We thank you, Lord, for each mind and heart that fills the presence of this room. We thank you for every seat that has been filled. We thank you for the 10th Annual Regional Conference to celebrate in Day for Women in Maritime. Thank you, Father, for mighty hand, that your guidance will be sufficient for us. We thank you, Almighty God, as we continue to foster relations, that the impact of all the things that we are going to discuss and share will be greatly filled outside this auditorium. We thank you for the 60 nations represented here today. We thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Good morning once again. The governor, Kisumu County, His Excellency, Professor Peter Nyangyongo, the Permanent Secretary, State Department of Shipping and Maritime, Ambassador Nancy Karigidu, representing the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Transport, Housing and Urban Development, Kenya, Mr. Zhang, Director, Technical Cooperation Div uh, Division, International Maritime Organization, representing the IMO Secretary General, Mr. William Azu, Head of Africa Section, Division, International Maritime Organization, Ms. Anene Wodajo, President, Wemesa Region. Captain Dave Muli, Regional Coordinator, International Maritime Organization. Captain Jeremiah Onyango, Regional Manager, Kenya Maritime Authority, representing the DG Kenya Maritime Authority. The Wemesa Chapter representatives from the 16 countries hereby represented. All speakers and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. We welcome you to the 10th Annual Conference uh, for Wemesa. And, uh, of the International Women in Maritime Day. Uh, I, uh, we are glad and honored to be um, in the presence of the governor, Kisumu County, who has gracefully accepted our invitation to be our chief guest today. And uh, in he has kindly requested that we shorten the program because of the time um, and his engagements. So I would uh, go ahead and request Madam P.S. Ambassador Nancy Karigidu to give welcome remarks. The Governor of Kisumu County, His Excellency Professor Anyang Nyong, uh, all other distinguished delegates, good morning. Uh, today is a very, very auspicious day, and I am very happy to stand in front of you to be welcoming you to Kenya for the international delegates and to Mokisumu City, but I'm sure the governor will do it even better. Uh, as you've heard, we're celebrating a very auspicious day, a very great day, because it's the first ever 
International, IMO International Day for Women in Maritime. And we are very, very honored to be doing it in Kisumu City, sir. Thank you for, you for the warm welcome that we've received since we were here. The day actually falls on the 18th of May, but as you will recall, Kisumu was hosting the Afri Cities last week, and we did not want to shine on your parade, sir. So we said we would be with you during our free cities, but come back. And that's why we are here. And we are very honored that you could expand and give us time to come and be with the ladies. As you've heard, we've we have delegates from 16 countries in the Eastern and Southern African region. And we are also celebrating 15 years since this association was formed. We have seen it grow in leaps and bounds. We were a few older women before, but now we are beginning to see younger ladies, and we are seeing that's the impact of Womesa. So I want to, before I welcome you, to thank most profusely the International Maritime Organization who has held our hand from beginning until now. We are very humbled, we are very honored. But we also look forward to the day that uh, the world will not need a day to celebrate women because women in maritime will be commonplace and it won't be an issue, you know, something to marvel about because we don't have a day for teachers, women teachers, women doctors, because they are all fully in integrated. And I know the day is coming. And with those few remarks, Honorable Governor, I wish to welcome you to come and make your remarks so that we can release you. Is that so? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, P.S., for being gracious and give me time to address this very important conference and meeting. Um, maritime tran transport is something very dear to my heart because when I was a kid in primary school, my eldest brother graduated from what was then called intermediate school, finished under eight and his first job was an officer in MV Kamongo <laughs> on Lake Victoria. And he came home with a white uniform. He was so smart that I said, my first job will be an officer in MV Kamongo. <laughs> and never to be because not only did MV Kamongo disappear subsequently, my brother also left and to go and do other jobs. But anyway, my dear Principal Secretary of State Department of Shipping and Maritime, Ms. Nancy Karigitu, the president of the Association of Women in the Maritime Sector in Eastern and Southern Africa region, Womesa. I like that name, Womesa. Sounds like women on a mesa. <laughs> Ms. Anene Wadajo, all protocols of Saudi. I wish to take this opportunity to welcome all of you to Kisumu County, and specifically, this beautiful city of Kisumu on Lake Victoria. I trust you have already sampled what Kisumu has to offer as a hub of Western Kenya tourism circuit and the regional business hub in East and Central Africa. If you have not toured Kisumu yet, get a little time off your busy schedule during this workshop to discover this city. And if you are not sure where to go, my city manager is here let him stand. He will be responsible for all your affairs in this city while you are here. We feel privileged and honored to host this high profile meeting that brings together women in the maritime industry and many other stakeholders in this sector. This conference came to Kisumu barely a week after we successfully hosted the five day after city summit, which brought together 11,000 participants from across the world. Thank you for having faith in Kisumu. We are indeed basking in glory as the world celebrates us for going beyond expectations in hosting the delegates. <laughs> Thank you so much. I needed that club this morning. 
as you can see, I'm addressed in battle fatigue. Eh? We are going to be campaigning for our next president, the fifth. Ladies and gentlemen, this meeting is as unique as it is interesting because for a long time, the maritime sector has been associated with men, like my eldest brother. We are all excited because our women are now taking their rightful position in this sector. The formation of Womesa was a game changer and an impetus to drive the gender equality in line with the Sustainable Development Goals SDG number five on gender equality under the auspices of the International Maritime Organization Women Development Program. And let me emphasize that the name Womesa in Swahili is very important because Mesa means a table. So women are now on the table <laughs> in the maritime sector. They will no longer be far away somewhere looking as people feast in the maritime sector. They're right there, Womesa, Sandini Sana. The, name, the main aim of this program was to integrate women in the mainstream maritime activities by offering them more training opportunities besides involving them in key decision-making roles. I am happy to note that WOMESA has since its formation in 2007 attracted members from 25 countries within Eastern Southern region, African region. This, to me, is a huge development worth celebrating. Today we are gathered here to mark the inaugural IMO International Day for Women in Maritime. Our distinguished ladies in the maritime sector will be sharing with us the milestones they have achieved since the formation of WOMESA. The delegates will also be offering mentorship sessions for young women joining the maritime sector, besides having activities in the region and the fisher folks. Our women trying their hands in the maritime sector will gain from this conference. Kisumu is a boiling point for maritime activities. Not only did we open a maritime college just near the port some time ago, not within the last five years, the recently renovated port offers countless opportunities in maritime. It has become busier with more vessels docking every day and with a dry dock now producing its second ship to sail on Lake Victoria, MV Uhuru number two. The blue economy also offers many investment opportunities for the region, and this gives Omesa the chance to ensure women are not sidelined in the available economic activities. I wish to appeal to Omesa leadership to pay a special attention to Kisumu, especially on our potential in the blue economy. Yesterday, I think I was being asked by the peers whether I we could offer some bursaries or fellowships to women training in maritime transport. I said yes, because we are already given, giving scholarships and bursaries to anybody going to the maritime college to train as a coxswain. Now training as an officer is even better, and we are prepared to work with you to help in capacity building for women in the maritime sector. <laughs> Kisum has a big potential on the economy because of its proximity and interactions with lake basin development and the Great Lakes region. The region has recently experienced various uplifts in the maritime sector by various relevant agencies, including refurbishment of the port, establishment of maritime security stations by Kenya Coast Guard Service, and the, and the establishment of the shipyard. Kisumu now has a marine training school, and we need to sensitize more women to undertake courses here to boost their capacity and involvement in the blue economy. As a country, a county, we have launched bursaries and scholarships for school leavers, including women wishing to pursue maritime courses at the new school. In fact, we are paying fees for two students, a man and a woman, from each of the 35 wards enrolled at the maritime school. That means a total of seven students that we are supporting at the maritime school. I agree with Womessa leadership that despite their contribution to the labor force in the maritime sector, women have not reaped the full benefits here. They have been confined to the low paying jobs while their male counterparts with similar qualifications prosper much better. It has also been established that most women with interest in interest developing their career in the sector 
have not done so due to limited information. But even as we seek to address these challenges that have slowed down the progress of women in maritime, we also celebrate those who have broken the ceiling in this sector. Today, we have women holding a high office in the maritime sector. One of us here, P.S. Nancy Karigitu, is a role model in maritime matters. <laughs> Before becoming the permanent secretary, she had spent many years in the maritime sector and has a wealth of experience that she can share with you. We want to produce many other Nancy Karigitus in Kenya and in the rest of Africa. <laughs> it is exciting to know that many Kenyan women are taking up roles in the maritime sector. These days, it is not uncommon to see women managing ships, especially in the Kenyan Navy. We want to see more women taking charge of not only of the warships, but cargo vessels, and even the passenger ferries and other maritime and blue economy related assignments. We want to see women defying the stereotypes by also taking up jobs as beach management unit leaders and other roles that will place them as key players in the maritime and blue economy sectors. Some communities have used culture as an excuse to bar women from participating in fishing and related roles. For example, women have for a long time been barred from owning boats in my own community. So we are equally culpable for this kind of sex discrimination. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, I'm confident that these two-day conference, which has brought together a maritime clusters, will help trigger change in the maritime sector, and especially on the role played by women. I wish to you a successful deliberations and a happy stay in Kisumu and come back with many more such women, such, such conferences bringing you together from across Africa to celebrate the advancement of women in the maritime world. Thank you very much. Have a good conference. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that gentleman takes my speech away. <laughs> I'd like now to officially say that a conference is open. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, um, thank you. Uh, your Excellency, Professor Nyang Nyongo, with to present uh, the governor with a gift, I would kindly request Madam P.S. and uh, President Wimesa to present the governor with a token of appreciation. After that, we'll have the group photo. Thank you. Yes, you can just do it from here. It's okay. Can do it from, can do it from here. Okay. Uh, so now we, we now uh, need to take the group photo. Um, Lucy, can we have uh, our delegates and uh, a high table kindly? The group photo will just be here. The speakers, um, the speakers, IMO representatives, and uh, our panelists. Lucy? Kindly, let's have you on the podium. Head of Secretariat as well. Madam Sepiso, kindly welcome.
Uh, the ladies in uniform, it's your day. Please welcome. Chibule, kindly. Fall out, Governing Council Wimesa. Welcome to the podium. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Kindly, let's keep time. Balance? Yeah. the governor and the chair of representatives and IMF. Okay, thank you. The rest. Thank you. The, f the last photo is uh, by Madam P.S., Honorable Governor, um, representatives of IMO, and the president of Wimesa region. Um, so the next part of the program would be the speeches. Kindly let's allow our guests to escort the governor and we will now proceed with the speeches from the IMO and uh, representatives of the institutions as for the first, the first part of your program. Uh, we Mesa uh, region and then we have uh, the representative of KMADG. Um, I will announce the order once we have our guests back here. Thank you. Uh, for the password internet, Wimesa, the, the username is Wimesa and the password is Wimesa. W-O-M-E-S-A. I believe all the tables, you, uh, you have a piece of paper showing that.
Um, as our speakers get back, I would like to kindly invite the head of secretariat to give a few remarks uh, about uh, Wimesa region. Madam Rosemary Oile, Karibu. Let's welcome her. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, my duty here, I think it's been light uh, because uh, most of the key things have passed. But uh, my duty here today is to, it's my pleasure to welcome you, Albert, informally. Hello. It's my pleasure to welcome you, Albert, informally to the 10th annual conference and launch of the inaugural International Day of Women in Maritime. This auspicious day of celebrating was uh, established by the IMO uh, 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 essentially to promote the recruitment of uh, uh, recruitment retention and sustainer and sustained uh, employment in the maritime sector my duty today is only to welcome you all to this auspicious occasion and to celebrate with this auspicious day uh, and as we wait as we wait for the others uh, to come back, uh, we would like to continue. It's unfortunate uh, Madam President for Mesa region is not here, but she will be with us in a short while. Yes. Oh, sorry, yes. sorry. <laughs> so I would like to introduce Madam, uh, our President, Madam Anene Wodajo. She's a Womesa regional president. Uh, she comes all the way from uh, Ethiopia. Uh, welcome Madam Amene, Anene. Welcome, and address your people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Thank you. Greet all. Good morning. Good morning again. Principal Secretary at State Department for Shipping and Maritime Affairs, Envoy for Maritime and Blue Economy in Kenya, Madam Ambassador Dr. Nancy Karigitsu, Mr. Zhang, Director, Technical Cooperation Division of IMO, and representing uh, I am also Secretary General today. William Azu, Head of Africa Technical Cooperation Division, IMO. Captain Dave Mooley, Regional Coordinator, Eastern and Southern Africa, and representative of British High Commission, and delegates from all country representing Wemesa region. All protocols observed. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is a great honor and privilege this morning to be here in Kisumu, Kenya. I trust all delegates have arrived safely from the 16 countries represented here and are enjoying stay in Kenya so far. Allow me at the earliest opportunity on behalf of the Governing Council of Wemesa Region and on my own behalf as a president of the Association of Women in Maritime in the maritime sector to welcome you all to the, to the 10th annual conference and celebration to mark the inaugural International Day for Women in Maritime. I especially also take this opportunity to sincerely thank the International Maritime Organization for their immense support to WEMESA objectives and working with us for over 10 years of existing, uh, uh, since the existence of this association. The government of Kenya for accepting to host this conference. All the stakeholders who have supported us, our host Kisumu County, distinguished speaker, and the planning conference. The theme of this year's conference, Women in Maritime, Opportunities and Milestones Achieved, uh, could not have 
come to a better time as it resonates well with our objectives of the association, which is to advocate for the integration and advancement of women in the maritime sector. It is also called calls as to reflect regions in matters of maritime and relating to gender and the next steps and why uh, way forward to take to improve the current status where we are in. Ladies and gentlemen, key note to this that women still const uh, consist, uh, constitutes only 2% of the entire maritime workforce. It is not a coincidence, therefore, that the International Maritime Organization Assembly at its 32nd section, uh, session in 2021 resolved to designate 18th May of every year as the International Day for Women in Maritime to promote the recruitment, retention, and sustaining employment of women in the maritime sector. Raise the, prof uh, the profile of women in maritime, strengthening IMO's commitment to sustainable development of five gender equality and support work to address the current gender imbalance in the maritime and ensure uh, a barrier-free environment for women working in the sector. I would like to urge that as we sit here over the next two days to dialogue towards the overall objective of the conference, which is to accord key stakeholders and women in the maritime industry for a uh, forum to address the issue of available opportunity in the maritime sector, training opportunity, including how to access them, and factors that continue to impact women's advancement in the sector. This shall be done with the background information that we have and acknowledging the women have indeed managed to make an entry into the sector right from the shore as fisher forks, right into the engine rooms, and at best the steering wheel, which is a key progress which the region should take recognition of. At this juncture, we wish to congratulate all ladies who have indeed taken this opportunity and this position and are encouraging others through mentorship to grow in the industry. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, I look forward to great deliberation of uh, this conference resolution who, uh, whose climax will be in inauguration of the International Day for Women in Maritime, which will take place at a gala dinner uh, on 27th May of this tomorrow. And you are all invited to participate in the gala dinner. Uh, this launch all, uh, will also incorporate the launching of Mombasa Port and Northern Corridor Community Chapter Subcommittee on Gender and Equal Opportunity, which is also in line with the implementing SDG 5 on gender equality and whose main objective uh, would be to ensure a barrier-free work environment in the maritime sector. Kindly enjoy the shore of Lake Victoria, which is also a key hub for the blue economy uh, of this region, connecting the East African community countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, uh, which I'm uh, reliably informed has various blue economy developments, including the Kenyan Coast Guard service, service which has established various stations to enhance maritime security in the region and the presence of the maritime administration and uh, continuous sensitization on the maritime issue, which plays a key, r uh, a key impact in the maritime development of this region. So remember to also stay alerted for uh, a fresh uh, fish from the lake as the region is alive with uh, Fisher Falls actively, and majority of women are engaged, uh, engaged in the trade as the main source of income uh, on the shore uh, lake of Victoria and its islands. So thank you very much, and enjoy the conference. Thank you, Madam President. I'd like to call upon the representative of the Kenya Maritime Authority Director General, uh, Mr. Jeremiah Onyango to give his remarks.
Thank you so much. I was called as a captain. I'm engineer Jeremiah Onyango of Kenya Maritime Authority, lunch officer in Kisumu, this region. Before I read the speech of Director General, I've got a holding statement. Kenya as a country has the port in Mombasa. Lake Victoria, second freshwater lake in the world and 68,000 square kilometers, shortens the distance between the port of Mombasa and Port Cornell in Gabon, West Africa, land and rail. What are we talking about? Blue economy. And last, last but not least, it is no longer Vasco da Gama and Bartholomew Dias. Ladies in uniform, can you stand up? <laughs> you can see that they were looking for the, that route and they were men. Ladies can now toil in the oceans to make the world grow. <laughs> Christine, thank you. My colleague, thank you. Have a seat. Following is now the remarks of the Director General Robert Njue, Kenya Maritime Authority, the 10th Annual Regional Conference to celebrate IMO Day for Women in Maritime Maritime at Acacia Premier Hotel, where we are, Kisumu, 26th May 2022. His Excellency Professor Peter Nyang Nyongo, Governor of Kisumu, Ambassador Dr. Nancy Karigithu, CBS, Principal Secretary, State Department of Shipping and Maritime, Maritime Transport, Infrastructure, Housing, Urban Development, and Public Works. Mr. Zian Jiang, Director of Technical Cooperation Division, International Maritime Organization, IMO. Mr. William Mazu, Head of African Section, Subdivision for Maritime Development, Technical Cooperation Division, IMO. MS Ann Wadajo, Womesa Regional President. Womesa Regional President, you know, Womesa Regional President is a big person within the region, eh? MS Lydia Ngugi, head of MTCC Africa. MS Patricia Davis, UK Department for Transport, Maritime Security, Liaison Officer, MASLO for South Saharan Africa. MS Fumi Folurunso, Secretary General, African Ship Owners Association. Dr. Jacqueline Uku, Senior Research Scientist, Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. Mr. Mos no, heads of non-departmental, non heads of government, non-departmental and shipping agency, consulate representatives, maritime and shipping fraternity, port community, seafarers where I belong, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to join you in marking the 10th regional conference to celebrate the inaugural IMO Day for Women in Maritime, which draws attention to gender, diversity, inclusiveness, and the empowerment of women in the de development maritime industry and blue economy. Today is an opportune time to celebrate the great roles women are playing in shipping, shaping the future of our maritime industry globally, and indeed the immense work being done by the Association for Women in the Maritime Sector for East and Southern Africa, WOMESA, in supporting women in maritime within the region. Ladies and gentlemen, while the gender imbalance exists in the maritime industry, we are happy that all players in the industry have been collaborative effort, have begun collaborative effort to address this, this. Research shows that there is minimal representation of women on board ships, in management roles, in other maritime general functions. Men dominate the maritime class and all functions, functional levels in shipping, ports, port operations, maritime administration, shipbuilding, 
maritime education, training, and marine-related functions. The number of women in the number of women in the maritime sector, especially for technical and seagoing roles, remain low, even though this is gradually changing with more women getting in sea careers. Kenya not an exceptional and you have seen ladies in uniform. The newly established, the newly published 2021 Women in Maritime Survey report indicates that the proportion and distribution of women working in the maritime sector from IMO member states and the maritime industry account for 29% of the overall workshop in the general industry and 20% of workshop national maritime authority in member states. According to data gathered from the member states, search and rescue teams in national maritime authorities account for insignificantly fewer women staff, just 10%, as compared to female diplomats, 33%, and training staff, 30%. Women in maritime security report highlights that women seafarers make less than 2% of the world seafarer are mainly employed by the cruise sector. I'm excited to learn that the survey indicates that women, associations of Kenyan Comoros, leave the table for female seafarers who are all female association members. They are followed by cruise companies from New Zealand and Spain. Those make up 10 times the proportion of women seafarers globally in ship owning companies. Women, up, women make up 34% of the workforce. Previous study done by the International Labor Organization, ILO Maritime Organization, International Maritime Organization and the International Seafarer Wel Welfare Association, ISWAN, also indicate that women accounted for less than 2% of the world's 1.2 million seafarers serving on 87,000 ships. Women from 17 to 18% of seafaring work workforce in the cruise sector, while 6% of women seafarers work on cargo ships. Most of women seafarers work on work as ratings or service staff on passenger ships with only 7% serving as officers on board vessels. We are lucky we have two uniformed staffs, uniformed officers with straps on their shoulders. Nonetheless, we are glad to know that in maritime business areas comprising mostly entirely show side staff, women are much more stronger represented. Some of the biggest employers are the cruise industry, create ag cru crewing agencies, maritime law, recruiters, public relations, marketing, advertisement, insurance, which boast female workshop of up to 50%. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the total number of women seafarers worldwide, about 9.8% come from Latin America and Africa with the majority coming from the Organization for Economic Cooperation Development, EOECD countries estimated at 51.2 and 23.6 from Eastern Europe. This is an indication that there is a great need for us to do more in Kenya and Africa to empower women in the sector this calls for more energies and actions-oriented strategies among all the maritime actors to increase the inclusion and participation of women. Ladies and gentlemen, women in the industry continue to face challenges in assess assessing education, training opportunities, op opportunities, obtaining cadet qualified seafarers opportunities because of a misled belief that women work on sea for less time than men. Career prog progression and promotion, women are paid less than men doing same work at sea. Some employers may refuse to promote women to more senior ranks 
lack of facilities on board to cater for their unique needs. Others may face bullying, sexual harassment, or violence at sea, while most women have to prove have proved themselves more than male crew by working to their limits or the limits of their endurance. We urge all industry partners work to work together to create safe and barrier-free environment for women in the industry to thrive and excel, as well as ensure their access to maritime education, training, opportunity, opportunities in line with the Sustainable Development Goal 5 on gender equity. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya Maritime Authority is cognizant that women in the sector are participating actively in the current developments in the maritime and blue economy sectors in Kenya, challenging stereotypes, stimulating growth and reducing poverty, generating jobs in the industry through their entrepreneurship skills, piloting research, mentoring generations for the country's maritime and blue economy. KMA supports initiatives that promote the inclusion, of inclusion and participation of women in the maritime and blue economy industry. Empowerment of women in the maritime sector. Case, KMA supports employment of qualified women in the maritime sector and representation of women key decision makings in the sector. In regard KMA has provided qualified women based on merit with equal access to opportunities to work in the authority and contributes to the progression of maritime sector in various cadres in line with the Sustainable Development Goals 5 on gender equity. Noteworthy, 12.5% of the Authority Technical Maritime Safety Department consists of In marine, marine engineering, nautical studies, maritime education train and training, global maritime distress, distress and safety system, GMDSS, and maritime safety and environmental and environment. Additionally, about 42% of the workshop at KMA comprise of women. We will all agree that gender diverse teams enable the maritime community to benefit from a wide-ranging talent pool, promote better job satisfaction, employee engagement, and retention. In addition, KMA, Kenya Maritime Authority, continue to, to facilitate access to seafaring employment opportunities to provide women and men decent working conditions of freedom equity, security, human dignity in line with Maritime Labor Convention 2006 MLC as amended and the Merchant Shipping Act of 2009 and placement agents to seafarers in Kenya. Currently, the authority has licensed five recruiting agents, namely Mombasa Ocean Agency, Diverse Shipping, Alpha Logistics, East African Deep Sea Fishing, Mediterranean Shipping Company, MSC Ship, Ship Management Limited. Furthermore, the authority is currently collaborating with the State Department of Shipping and Maritime and Ministry of Labor, Social protect, Protection, as well as stakeholders in the development of wage standard for Kenya seafarers. Once a wage order is established, Kenya seafarer women and men will enjoy equity be pay for equal work on board ships, res re resolving the current disparity in wages of Kenya seafarer and seafarer from the countries who are established wage standard. Kenya Maritime Authority also continues to mediate in disputes between seafarer and their employers, as well as Council seafarers on employment agreements with crewing agencies. This way, Kenya women seafarers are assured that we have developed multi-agency mechanism of dealing with the grievances and disputes that may arise in their working environments. Additionally, the authority, port state control and flag state inspectors, 
conduct ship inspections, which include, among others, examining the work, of work conditions of seafarers on board the vessel. This way, we are able to monitor the working conditions for women seafarers aboard vessels which ply the Kenya waters. Ladies and gentlemen, standardization and accreditation maritime education and training institutes are fundamental entry point for women seafarers and facilitate their access to specialized technical training, positioning them to benefit an array of competitive opportunities alongside the men in the sector. Thus, the KMN ensures that Kenya bears to the requirements of training certification of seafarers in accordance to the standards of training certification for seafarers, STCW Convention 1978, as amended. And that the quality standards are maintained in approved training institutes. This ensures that our women seafarers, women pursuing land-based maritime courses, assess the best quality of maritime education training in local institutes, such as in the Bandari Maritime Academy and Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture of Te Technology, enabling them to compete and benefit the international maritime labor market. Ladies and gentlemen, mentoring plays a pivotal role in empowering women and girls to join marine maritime sector, pursue careers in the sector seen as a preserve of men, as well as take up key leadership positions in the sector. Studies have indicated that women progress better in their maritime careers if they have knowledge of and access to mentors, to mentors and women leaders in the sector to inspire them. Thus, KMA, alongside other partners in the industries, continue to mentor, educate, sensitize women and girls around the country about the maritime sector and blue economy, career opportunities in the sector. Go to see campaign. Let's be plying the waters. And investment opportunities to enable them participate actively in the maritime and blue economy industry. Moreover, KMI holds the Secretariat of Association of Women in Maritime Sector for East Southern Africa, WOMESA, noting that such associations are a valuable platform for women in the sector to develop leadership skills, network, share experiences from synergies and discuss issues that affect the performance in the sector. The accentuates this accentuates the authority passion to see Kenya women challenge stereotype and sell in the global maritime and blue economy sector. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, it has been emphasized that empowering women fuels thriving economies across the world, spurs growth and development, benefit everyone in the global maritime community in the draft towards safe secure, clean, sustainable shipping. To Omesa, congratulations, keep up the good work of promoting inclusivity for women in the maritime industry. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Engineer uh, Jeremiah. I have the pleasure of inviting Madam uh, Permanent Principal Secretary, State Department for Shipping and Maritime, and Special Envoy for Maritime and Blue Economy, uh, Ambassador Nancy Karigidu. The members of the Governing Council and the Chairman, or the Chairperson, sorry, <laughs> of WOMESA, Madame Anene Wodanjo, uh, representative of the British Embassy, Madame Patricia Davis, our distinguished and worthy partners, not least of which includes the Africa Association of African Maritime Administrators and the African Ship Owners Association, 
and also our local partners, uh, our speakers and panelists. The IMO, International Maritime Organization, represented very heavily today, uh, beginning with the director of the Technical Cooperation Division re representing uh, the Honorable Secretary General. That's Mr. Zhang. We've got the head of Africa in IMO, Mr. William Azu, and our own doc Captain Dave Muli, the IMO regional coordinator for the Eastern and Southern African region in Nairobi. Distinguished panelists, our seafarers, distinguished guests from outside Kenya and within Kenya, a very good morning to you. I think women, we do it differently, isn't it? Because we change with the flow. We had to accommodate uh, His Excellency the Governor. So we are having then two sessions of opening, just because we are women, you know? <laughs> so allow me at the outset first to congratulate the people of Kisumu under their leadership for the very successful hosting of the ninth Afri Cities Summit just concluded last week, and which was the first edition to be hosted in an intermediary city. So you begin to understand why we chose Kisumu for this very important occasion. I also note that Kisumu is a city uh, that grew when, you know, that owes its history to when the railway arrived, first arrived in 1901, but which grew because of a vision to utilize the Lake Victoria as the gateway for the rest of East African region. And that vision is as relevant today as it then was. And we are proud to be associated with Kisumu City as Wamesa. Uh, finally, in this, let me say that it brings me great joy and pleasure to join all of you today to the 10th Annual Regional Conference and Workshop to celebrate the first ever <coughs> IMO International Day for Women in Maritime. And what a fitting theme we are celebrating the day under. Training, visibility, recognition, supporting a barrier-free working environment. I bring you greetings from my cabinet secretary, uh, Honorable James Masharia, who was planning or who was set to be with us today, but who due to other exigencies of duty could not be with us, but he sends his very hearty greetings to you. I look forward one day to the day that women in maritime sector will be so commonplace that ladies like Dorothy and Christine will be commonplace. We will not be looking at them you know, with a second glance because they look different and they look like men. I like uh, Captain, Jer I mean, Engineer Jeremiah saying that had Vasco da Gama had the company and benefit of such. I'm very sure. <laughs> so we are grateful that we can be proud of them. And I want to say that before that day happens, before the day that women become commonplace, I want to acknowledge the support, very strong support, to the International Maritime uh, uh, Organization for accepting that improving the participation of women in the maritime community leads to better social and economic outcomes, and that empowering women fuels thriving economies, spurs productivity and growth, and benefits every stakeholder holder in the global maritime community. And for this reason, therefore, we must provide women with equal access to opportunities at all levels of development, including the maritime sector. And we must continue to challenge traditional assumptions that discourage the inclusion and participation of women in the industry, and thus allow global shipping to draw upon the most talented people irrespective of their gender. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that as a follow-up on the action of the 2019 World Maritime Day theme of empowering women in the maritime sector, the IMO Council 
resolved to establish the International Day for Women in Maritime and for that day to be observed on the 18th May of every year as a show of great interest and goodwill for women in the sector. In addition, all the countries represented in this conference have indeed shown their commitment to this special day, which we believe will be for the good of individual countries as well as the region as a whole. us with the opportunity to table what is missing. And we were told that Womesa actually is table. I hadn't thought about that, but it makes sense. So we'll be bringing what is good to the table and also to raise awareness of the struggles and inequalities prevalent in the sector and offer ways to mitigate the same. And also, the day will be a platform for recognizing achievements of women in the sector. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the 2021 Seafarer Workforce Report, today women represent only 2% of the global Seafarer workforce. And this represent, while this represents a positive trend because it's growing, grown a little, positive trend in gender balance with the report estimating that 24,059 women serve as seafarers, which is a 45.8% increase compared with the 2015 report. But current statistics indicate that women represent only 2% of the world's 1.2 million seafarers and 94% of female seafarers in the cruise industry. So you see where the balance is. But it's not all doom and gloom, as efforts to promote gender equality are experiencing a very positive momentum worldwide. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, in the, its review of maritime transport in 2018, noted that there is an increasing number of women who are entering the shipping industry in all roles, including seafaring and operations, ship chartering, insurance, and also law. More women are also enrolling in maritime-related studies, studies, and this has been in no doubt due to the concerted efforts by many players to advance the role of women in the maritime industry, not least of which has been from the IMO through initiatives like this day, and also concerted efforts to help the industry move forward and support women to achieve a representation that is in keeping with 21st century expectations. Gone is the myth that women are bad luck at sea. And today, the global shipping industry embraces the various roles that the women can play in the sector as workers and as leaders in the industry, whether at sea or on shore, in shore-based operations, in the offices of shipping companies, as policy makers also. But our job is not yet done. We must do more to bridge the gender gap. We therefore laud the IMO for being consistent in, eff in the concerted efforts to help the industry move forward and support women in this role. The countries in Womesa region are not being left behind as they come together to ensure progress in the maritime sector and with a key focus on gender. It is imperative that there be a barrier-free environment for women, and making all efforts to see that all women participate fully, safely, and without hindrance in their activities from all the maritime cluster, and not least the, the cruise tourism as well, because this will enable the industry to grow not only in specific nations, but in the entire region for the economic development and prosperity of the countries. If there is one message, ladies and gentlemen, that each one of us must take back home uh, to our governments and especially the ministries of education, it is that we must start addressing the issue of training in order to make concerted efforts to address one of the major factors contributing to the occupational segregation in the shipping industry. Due to the gender gap in the study or in the fields of STEM, which means science, technology, engineering, and maths at advanced career levels, that is graduate and research. This is due to the fact that it is the single most reason that hinders the achievement of gender equality in the maritime sector. This lack of presence of ladies in STEM translates to a limitation in size and diversity of the pool of talent available to each country for satisfying the demand for skills and also to reaching the maximum development potential in the sector. 
Female role models must also rise up so as to help the young women develop the right self-perception for different career paths in the maritime industry, apart from the traditional, stereotypical ones that they have been conditioned to embrace. And most important, we must also take important steps to include the integration of women in the maritime sector at the design and planning of policies, programs, and projects, as well as financing, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. Ladies and gentlemen, let me speak just a minute on the industry itself and the major challenges that it's facing today, including the most complex challenge of our times, and that is climate change. This is a challenge that requires a concerted, proactive, and holistic approach. ILO, International Labor Organization, has already warned us that there is an elevated risk that the decarbonizing of the economy will only confirm the current gender gap if considerable effort is not taken to narrow gender segregation at the educational and occupational levels. Gender equality is a fundamental condition to achieve a just and efficient transition to a decarbonized shipping sector. And in this transition, the participation of women cannot be underscored. A successful inclusion of women, therefore, in the sector means achieving greater diversity and complementarity, as well as expanding the pool of talent to better address the demand for skills. And as I conclude, I would like to urge government entities as well as private sector players in the maritime industry to develop and implement policies that will ensure and encourage the participation of women in the maritime community. I encourage all of us to develop programs that will attract and also retain women in the maritime community while addressing the unique needs of the woman in the workplace and in business. WOMESA will continue advance and support the development and progression of women in all cadres of the maritime sector and we look forward to your partnership and collaboration and most of it let me say single out the International Maritime Organization for collaboration and partnership as I now invite uh, the representative of IMO to come and Mr. Zhang to come and address us thank you so much we also request Mr. Zhang to take our very profound and personal greetings and thanks and appreciation to the Secretary General. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ambassador Nancy Karigizu, Principal Secretary, State Department and Maritime Affairs, Ministry of Transport, and the founding member and the patron of Wimosa. Excellencies here present, Ms. Anini Wadajo, President of Wimosa, no. distinguished national and regional executives and the members of uh, Wimosa, invited guests, ladies, and gentlemen. Good morning. I hope that I have not left anybody in these solutions. If I did, please pardon me as it was not deliberate. You are all duly recognized. Let me start this good with message from IMO by expressing my delight to be with you today on the occasion of your 10th annual conference and workshop, and more importantly, to celebrate with you the very first IMO International Day for Women in Maritime. This visit is my first official mission outside Europe since I assumed duty at the peak of COVID-19. <laughs> Thank you. So I will always remember this event and my first official visit to Africa as director of the Technical Cooperation Division of IMO. As you are aware, the International Day for Women in Maritime 
kicked off at IMO headquarters on Wednesday last week, the 18th of May, with a well-attended international symposium, which attracted the participation of more than 1,500 people who logged down from across the world, covering 125 countries. These huge numbers are indicative of the interest and the critical importance of the subject matter of women in maritime, both at national, regional, and the global levels. 18th May 2022 has been described as a landmark date for women in maritime, meaning that there is now a new horizon for women in maritime, particularly at the top levels of leadership. Well, the occasion served as a celebration. Crucially, it provides a platform to highlight the achievements of women in maritime and identify areas of improvement for gender balance. In the words of the IMO Secretary General, Mr. Kitak Lim, I quote, there is a still a gender imbalance in maritime, but times are changing. It is recognized that diversity in maritime benefits the entire sector. Women in maritime are working everywhere to support the transition to a decarbonized, digitalized, and a more sustainable future. Let's take this opportunity to celebrate the many women who are contributing to the future of maritime. Maintaining a engine on a ship, running a company, drawing up a contract, surveying a vessel, or chairing an IMO committee meeting. Well, there is much to celebrate. There is also the need for more progress to be made." Unquote. The foregoing statement by the Secretary General is a testimony to the many sacrifices all of you have made and continue to make in the industry at various levels. On our part as IMO, we will continue to sub, uh, support your efforts to ensure there is equality, equity, inclusivity, and a fair balance in the otherwise male-dominated industry. As we all know, statistics are important in addressing issues of numbers and balance. In the light of this recognition and fact, IMO, in collaboration with Vista International, commissioned a survey of women in maritime across the world. The results of the survey analysis are revealing and uh, buttresses the fact that a lot more needs to be done. I urge you to read the report, which was launched last week, and available on IMO's website. Turning now to WOMESA as a regional body, your special relationship with IMO is 15 years this year. Having been established in 2007, the nascent WOMESA has now grown to become an important stakeholder in the maritime sector in the region. IMO will continue to support not just Vemesa, but all eight WEMAs to build the necessary capacities and the position women to occupy leadership positions in the maritime sector beyond the seafaring. So my presence here today as Director of the Technical Cooperation Division of IMO and that of my colleague, Mr. William Azuk, the head of Africa who also has the responsibility for IMO's Women in Maritime program demonstrates the seriousness of IMO attached to matters relating to SDG 5 and the promotion of women and girls in all spheres of it. We also believe 
in the strategy of catch them young. And uh, I encourage Vomesa to consider including awareness programs and activities targeted at secondary and even primary school pupils so that at an early stage in their lives, the young girls would appreciate the importance of maritime in, their, in the world economy and may consider taking up maritime as a profession in their future. I have had a look at your program for the 10th annual conference workshop and observed that there will be presentations, including one from IMO, to deliberate and dissect a variety of subject matters aimed at making the industry better and establish women in maritime as a formidable force to reckon with IMO is with you all through. Finally, I want to say congratulations to all of you and uh, keep the flag flying. Asendi sana. Thank you, um, Mr. Zhang. So ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our first uh, session, and uh, we will then proceed for tea break, which is 30 minutes. Tea will be served at uh, the Acacia um, rooftop or the second floor, uh, um, where we had the cocktail, for those of you who were here, but it's on the second floor. And then we will come back and um, proceed with the second session, which consists of the various presentations and panel discussions. Um, so the first um, panel discussion, um, we have the following speakers, Mr. William Azu uh, from IMO, to be followed by um, Ambassador Nancy Karigidu, Dr. Jacqueline Uku, and uh, Ms. Sepiso um, from South Africa. So that is what we will have between 11 and 12. So for now, uh, we'd like to welcome you for tea. Um, ushers, kindly um, please motion our guests to the second floor. Um, yes, thank you. We're coming back at uh, 11 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>